Howdy guys, hoping to do a really quick and fun one here and actually hopefully useful, especially for me. I've been wanting to do this for quite a while and I've been waiting for the right car to come along, but we're going to test out a little contraption I've made to do a field leak down test. And the idea is a lot of times I have to go to the salvage yard to find a cylinder head or even a whole engine. You can't do compression tests at the salvage yard. You can't, you're, they're not allowed to turn the engines over. You also are very limited in how much compressed air you're going to be able to bring with you. So the idea is I've made a little portable air compressor into a leak down tester and I've been waiting to do this video to have the right car come along. This Honda Civic here happens to have a bent exhaust valve that I just diagnosed. So it's only got the bent exhaust valve in one cylinder. So we've got both positive and negative controls that we can do to verify that the leak down tester works. I have validated the bent valve through a traditional compression test and leak down test and one cylinder has markedly, markedly lower compression than the others. So my little device should be able to pick that up if it works. Let's go ahead and see. So what I have here is a little Goodyear cordless inflator and uh, I know that the PSI will go up to 90 or better. You can actually set a default on the dial here. And obviously what I've done is I've modified the hose to have a typical air chuck on it and we can hook up our leak down tester to this thing. So my concern is, will this thing develop enough flow so that it can successfully detect a leak down? Remember, even on a good engine, you're gonna have some leak down past the rings especially. So we wanna make sure that uh, there's enough CFM of airflow that this will be able to keep up. That's really my only concern with it. And the other thing is it's a little bit noisy so one of my concerns is that the noise will make it impossible if there is leak down to detect where it's coming from through the intake, through the exhaust. Um, the cooling system would not be easy in a junkyard. There's no coolant in the radiator in the cars. So that may be a little bit of a limitation too, but let's go ahead and test it out, see how it works. So the first thing I wanna do, I wanna to go to our known good cylinder and I wanna find true top dead center here. Now, of course, it, it doesn't matter on compression stroke because we don't have a camshaft in here right now, so all of the valves are closed. But the idea is I'm suspecting with a low CFM output from the compressor, I wanna have the piston at top dead center just simply because it's all the less compressed air that the compressor is gonna to have to deliver. It should make it as easy as possible for this little guy to do his job. So I've got an additional complication. I still haven't removed the timing chain here. So I've got a little support so my timing chain doesn't bind up. And uh, that's also gonna be important so that if the piston does move with the compressor, that it doesn't tingle up my timing chain. Okay, so we just passed top dead center there. So I'm gonna find true top dead center. Okay, right there should be top dead center and the piston shouldn't move on us. And then put in our hose. And normally, as many of you guys know, I like to do my leak down test with the piston actually at bottom on the compression stroke because I can then account for the entire cylinder if there's any compromises. But uh, just to make sure this thing's working right, we're gonna go ahead and do it from the top center. And what I wanna do now is let's see how much, I wanna get the maximum PSI. Uh, before I connect this up, let's go ahead and see how much we can get with our air pressure. All right, this thing says it can go up to 150, but I doubt that. Okay, and you can see that we're getting to about 90 there, which is plenty, I am happy with that. And we've got our set point good. So let's go ahead and connect this up and see if it works. Okay, and hopefully this thing has an auto shut off. Uh, hopefully that it'll turn back on again as soon as I connect and it doesn't, so I'll have to turn it on. And let's see, we didn't get any movement of the piston at all. So I know that we're maintained at our top dead center. And it looks like we are not able to keep up with just the CFM from a good cylinder. Um, that is kind of a bummer actually. All right, I just tried again, and uh, yeah, we are not gonna have much luck here. 
but what I do want to do is see if we move this to the bad cylinder, will it read a lot lower? So let's take note of our reading. So we're just at past 60%. Let's go ahead and put it on the known bad cylinder and see what happens. So this is the cylinder with the leakage past the exhaust valve, or maybe valves, but uh, won't know till I get the head off. Let's go ahead and find top dead center on this guy. Okay, that'll be top dead center, and it's pretty obvious that this would not work at all with the piston, I believe, at bottom, or it would take forever for it to build up the compression. But let's go ahead and Go ahead and just see if we read less than 60, which would be at least some indication that maybe we can still get by with this. Let's connect up. Well, and we can see that it's reading considerably lower. Uh, we've got 80% leak down, so we do have some indication there that maybe this, this could potentially work. Okay, just to be safe, we're going to go ahead and try this on one more uh, control. Let's put it into one more cylinder that I know is good. See that we read 60% again. All right, let's go to another good cylinder here. Find our top dead center. And actually, you know what? I wonder if this thing would develop enough pressure to even push this piston down. I'm just curious. Let's just see. And this will be easy to see because we can just see if the timing chain here moves. So let's go ahead, hook up and see if it builds enough pressure to actually move the piston. And all the spark plugs are out, obviously, so this shouldn't have too much trouble. And it is moving the piston. Huh. And it's kind of slowly building up pressure here, but that's going to take forever. And it's reasonable to expect that since this is a tire inflator, uh, you know, 30 PSI should easily be enough to move a piston, but let's go ahead and bring this up to top dead center and see that we read just over 60% leak down again. The compression in these other cylinders was definitely within spec, so I'm wondering if we can say that 60% leak down for this thing would be a baseline for a good healthy engine, but I, I'm not totally comfortable with that. But if it reads 60% again, that would be pretty good indication. All right, well, as you can see, it reads right about 60% again. Well, obviously not as conclusive as I hoped for the little device. It clearly cannot keep up with the loss of compression that happens just normally through the rings and everything. So that's kind of the problem. It's obviously designed for filling a completely sealed system. But there is definitely consistency there. The leak down and compression tests that I did with the traditional methods on the two good cylinders were absolutely completely identical. They were within spec. And this thing did show identical readings at 60%. So if you assume 60% as a baseline, uh, at least on this little engine here, then I suppose that maybe you, you may have something there. It's a little bit hard to say. But the main thing is it definitely could not keep at all up with the loss of CFM through the bad exhaust valve cylinder. So the fact that any compression at all was built up um, may actually be indication that it's a healthy engine. If it's not a healthy engine, then this thing cannot obviously keep up with any of the loss of compression. So in my opinion, I actually believe this may be a useful tool that just, it doesn't give me a 100% indication, but it definitely gives me more indication. If I hook this thing up to a car in a salvage yard and I cannot build up any compression at all, I am safely going to say that there is absolutely loss of compression enough through the cylinder or rings or something that that engine is very, very questionable. And if it builds up 60%, I'm going to say that there is better indication, and actually maybe even good indication, that that engine is probably worth checking out. So that's kind of what I'm going to rest at. Hopefully this helped you out. Thanks for watching.